Today I am starting to put together the things that I need for my car camping trip. I'm going for one night and it just seems like such a lot of stuff. Uh, what have I got? So, I have one like shopping bag and then I have one for clothes stuff and then one for food stuff. So I'm going to take some basic toiletries, um, body lotion, a flannel like a face cloth, some paracetamol because if I don't sleep well, boy is that headache going to kick in quickly. Uh, a spare towel, a couple of coat hangers. Um, I have two two litre old lemonade bottles which I'm going to fill with water. I'm also going to take both my hot water flasks and I'm going to fill them with hot water just to make things a bit easier when I arrive. And I'm also taking a... Um, a hot water bottle because it really does get cold no matter how many blanket layers you've got on your bed. Um, also taking this bit of plastic that's going to be my breakfast bowl if I decide to have cereal. A knife and a spoon. Um, my travel kettle. I bought this last year it was about seven quid it's not amazing okay if you fill it up to the top it takes about two hours to heat water but if I'm doing one cup and I'm taking my thermos cup that won't take so long to heat up and I can do that that worked out really well in the end um, I've also got a spare towel a spare washcloth and a notebook and all my notes of all the things that I need to do also spare toilet roll because you never know one of the challenges of car camping is finding toilets. I use a website or an app called the Great British Toilet Map which basically pinpoints where all the toilets are and the places you're going to. And it's great because it's it's user it's user based. So when you when you use the map and when you go to a toilet you can then update the app to make sure that the information on it is accurate, the opening times are accurate, is it still there, do you have to pay, all that sort of thing, what facilities are there. So I used that with great effect last year. In Keswick there is, um, there is a block of public toilets from what I can tell and there's also one supermarket in town which is Booth which I think has toilets. I'm going to case that when I get there and check because on my last um, tr last camping trip last year and I ended up in Annan there was a Tesco's there, a big Tesco's it had toilets and everything and particularly first thing in the morning when you wake up and you just want to have a quick wash and everything you can go to the supermarket um, I will go to the supermarket, use the toilet, have a wash, brush my teeth and then buy some a token something like, I think I bought like um, three bananas or something so that you know I haven't taken the mickey. Um, I think Booth's is a pay and display car park because of the tourists, that they fill up the car park but I don't know whether if you buy something you get that back. I, what I'm going to do when I arrive I'm going to go and case out those things so I know what I've got access to because if booths are charging for their car park I know that I need to leave the car where it is and walk to booths to go and use the facilities whereas if it isn't then I can drive there in the morning freshen up and then go off to my next stop so that's that bag the other bag I have is um, again feels like too much but I'm going to shove it in the boot in there I've got a spare pair of trousers loads of spare pairs of socks I really should have taken more of those last time. I've learnt my lesson. A couple of spare tops, an extra jumper. I am taking three pairs of shoes. So I have my walking boots, I have my trainers, and a pair of shoes just for walking in town. None of my shoes are waterproof. And I got very wet last year. So that's why I'm taking loads of extra socks, um, several pairs of different shoes that will be good for walking in the graveyards. It looks like the first graveyard I'm going to is quite well manicured. It looks quite well looked after. So, whereas last year, where I was wading through grass that was up to my knees and it was soaking wet, this looks like it's going to be a bit more sensible. So that's that. The other thing I'm taking is um, obviously my food supplies because I won't be buying anything. I'll be living on picnics for two days and that's fine. I haven't put everything in here yet because I'm not going for a couple of days. 
but I just wanted to get organised. This giant call box I picked up for free a couple of years ago on Trash Nothing, which is a, a freebie site where you can get rid of stuff, and it's been absolutely fantastic. One of the best things about this um, this call box is it fits perfectly in the front passenger footwell of my car. So when I drop the passenger seat down, lay it all flat as my bed, this sits perfectly in the gap where my legs would normally go and extends the bed. Absolutely brilliant, perfect fit. So I'm gonna show you some of the things that I've packed. I've literally raided my uh, emergency snack bag and various other things and I've just dumped a load of stuff in because I'm not going to be eating properly so I've bagged up some muesli um, I'm going to take some milk which is in the freezer so that will stay frozen for part of the trip and I have some little freezer gel bags which my mum gave me which I'm going to put in there as well just to help keep everything chilled um, I have some peanut butter I have, this is out of my snack thing, that's a love con, they're alright, they're fine when you're out on the road, but I've also taken these, I got these as a freebie on one of the cashback apps last year and I've never opened them, so I'm taking those as a treat. Coffee, I'm not taking proper coffee, a friend of mine gave me a bunch of these, uh, beginning of last year I think, they don't like them, they're perfect for travelling, you shove that in, it's got everything in it for a coffee so I shove that in with my um, my little thermos cup and boil my one cup and because I now have that thermos cup if um, I'm only boiling one cup of coffee because that little kettle takes so long that one cup of coffee will last me ages because it's in a thermos mug um, also tea bags for the same reason taking my freebie fruit and nut that I got last month as a birthday thing that came off one of the cashback apps um, some drinks, so I've got this last of the Starbucks coffees, I'll take that if I need a coffee boost. Last year I came back with some of my stuff, I didn't eat half of what I, what I took with me. I'm also taking a couple of canned drinks, I don't drink soda, uh, fizzy drinks as a rule, but I thought these would be, you know, it had something different. I'll have tea and coffee but it won't be as accessible because of the kettle situation and I will generally just drink water. So I'm treating myself to a cream soda and I have an Aqua Libra. And again, these are all freebie things that I've picked up. These um, all ran out last year. I've had these for about two years in the cupboard. They'll be fine. There will be some other things going in which are still in the freezer. I've got um, like those pucker pasty type things. I've got a couple of those in the freezer and I'm going to throw those in those frozen so that they stay nice and chilled on the journey up and the next day. If I run out of anything, there is the booths in town. I'm not going to starve if I need to buy food. And I will probably go and buy, buy some bananas anyway because I'm going to really want some fruit. It gets very dehydrating. But I do find that although I'm definitely a snacker, and a grazer, when I'm out and about doing things, I stop thinking about food. So because I'm going to be really busy and I'm going to be, you know, spending hours walking through graveyards looking for dead ancestors, I'm not going to have time to worry about this stuff. So long as I've got the bottle of water with me, I'll be just fine. So that's all I've packed food-wise for the moment. Um, I've got the peanut butter. I'm going to take I've got two bagels in the freezer in the end of a bag. Normally I'd make bread to take on this trip, but I ended up with so much bread, I've just decided to take what's already in the freezer. If I'm freeing up some freezer space, then that means that I have extra space for things. So this is very much a low-key picnic style two days away. I'm not going to starve. Um, I'll be absolutely fine, and there is still access to food and things if I need to buy extra stuff. So that is me pretty much sorted there. Um, yeah, I think apart from the things that I still have to pack because they're in the freezer, I'm almost ready to go. I'll do a run through of how the car is going to look. I've done this before, but I'm modifying it this year. This is the final. If this doesn't work, sleeping in the car is not going to work. So I, this is my my third reinvention of my sleeping arrangement. So the first time I went on car camping trips, I just laid on my passenger seat 
laid out flat. I had some blankets to, um, to flatten it out a bit, but it wasn't comfortable. The second time I tried to sleep in the boot by putting all the back seats down, but I, it's, I, I have a very small car. It's a three door hatchback and I couldn't stretch out. And the problem is that although when I'm at home, I do tend to sleep in like a curled up position on my side, I also move around a lot. And the problem is that because I was doing so much walking when I'm out on these car camping trips because I'm researching and walking through graveyards and towns and all sorts of stuff, my legs at the end of the day are absolutely killing me. And because I couldn't stretch out at all, it was just complete agony. I couldn't stretch out my muscles. So I had a dreadful night doing that trip. Um, so I've gone, I'm going back to sleeping on, on the passenger seat. Uh, but I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. So I'm taking um, the thick cushions off my sofa and I'm going to pack it all out. So I will show you that when I do it. Um, that is going to be tomorrow. Uh, yeah, and I'll update you on that as and when, as and when that's happening. So um, we're getting there. It's happening. I'm so excited. I can't wait to go away. It's going to be so much fun. It's happening, finally. Car camping is go. Straighten you up there. I'm set, I'm organized. Packed, I think I've got everything. If I haven't, then I'm sure we'll manage. I love these little trips. This one's been a long time coming. And finally, we are here. So, it's about 20 to 9 in the morning. I've got roughly a two and a half hour drive. It's really overcast here. But, let's just have a look at the weather. 19, 18, 19 degrees for the next two days where I'm going. No rain today, there will be rain tomorrow. I have brollies of all types. Um, and of course I'm going home tomorrow, so if I get wet and whatever, um, I'm coming home. So it's only one overnight. My call bag is packed. My bed, you can see a bit of it there. Where is, where is it? There. Uh, I'm not sure how this is going to work, to be honest with you. Um, but it is what it is. I can only do what I can do. This is my last ditch attempt really. Um, if this kind of works, what I might do is buy like a memory foam roll out mattress that I can put the full lengths because the height on this is a bit tricky um, because I've used my cushions from my sofa or from my, one of the sofas in my house. Um, but when I'm laying on it, it's going to sink down. The reason I need to have something that's so squishy is because where the seats go down, when you pull the back of the seat up, there's a, a bar. And when you push the seat right down, that bar sticks in an upright position. And I got impaled on that several times and it was really painful. So that's why I've gone for something really thick because that now sits that now sits over all of those uncomfortable bits. So I'm hoping that's going to work. So I've got a podcast list ready to go. I just need to have a look at what's going on with my maps. Just need to find, I've got in mind where I want to park. I've looked at Google Street View and I think it's okay. I can't see any parking restrictions. And it'll be great because it'll be right next to the first place I need to be. If I get there and I can't park because it's full or it's restricted, I do have um, 
What else do I have? Well, oh, there's my saved. Um, I do have one other, which is another residential street, which also looks okay. And then if I get really stuck, there is a parking section out on the lay-by. Um, which I can do for overnight, but it's literally going to be a case of, you know, you don't always know what you're going to get until you get there because Google Maps isn't always up to date. They might have put parking restrictions in. You're never quite sure. So let's find our first place to stop. Um, I'm going to hopefully be able to show you some of my journey. Hopefully there'll be some nice scenic bits to look at. So um, I'm going to get going and um, I'll see you at the other end. stop for a quick toilet break I can't wait anymore I'm about an hour away so uh, I'm just gonna nip into the services and have a quick toilet break back in a minute oh man <laughs> I needed that toilet break oh, it's the only problem with road trips and going public places is finding places to go to the loo anyway so let's get back on the road
not helpful. I've arrived. <laughs> I'm here. Oh, this town is so pretty. Um, I couldn't get outside the church where I wanted to park. As you could see, it was really busy. That would have been an ideal place to stop. However, I am in my second option park up, which is a five minute walk away. And, um, it's pretty good actually. I've got on the end of the road, it's completely built up, but I've got a big hedge either side of the street. Um, there doesn't seem to be any parking restriction. And at night when it's quiet, there's no overseeing properties that would see me here. So I'm really tempted to just stay here overnight. I think this will do. Um, Right, yeah, so I'm here. I've got a reasonable charge to left on my phones. I am going to put some... I think I'm going to put a little bit of food in my backpack. The weather is gorgeous. It's a bit windy, so when I'm recording, I might have to do a voiceover afterwards because I don't think it's going to be quiet enough because I know people don't like it when, um, when it's really windy. Um, I'm just checking... My bag for various bits, I've got my notes, I have my water bottle, I am going to have to go into town and go and use facilities again, but everything feels pretty cool now, everything feels okay. This is good, I feel good about this. Right, I'm just going to... grab myself... And snack. I'm going to take these sweet chili prawn crackers. They'll do. It's only 11 o'clock, but I might not be back here for a bit. This road seems really good, actually. Have you seen the view on this road? That's the view I can see from my car. Look at the hills. It's so beautiful. So I am going to get my walking boots on and then I'm going to head up to the church. It is absolutely blooming gorgeous here. Right, so let's get
get our boots changed. And then we'll head off and start exploring. <laughs>